Yo, what's up guys? It's TraderX again. So welcome to it. Welcome to Trading Supply and Demand in Forex. The only two zones that matter. All right. So um, in this video here, I'm going to be touching on the only two zones that you need to concern yourself and the only two zones that exist um, for a supply and demand trader, right? Um, yeah. So before we do that, guys, I just want to touch on something quickly. Um, I, you know, I, I know I'm not the most qualified person to touch on the subject, but I um, just wanted to say to my fellow South Africans, we are facing, um, you know, a nationwide shutdown as of midnight, the 26th of March, 2020. A lot of people have been looking at this negatively because, you know, it's going to have an impact on their social life. Um, but I would say really to you guys is try to stay home. You know what I mean? Stay home, look after your family, look after yourself. And, you know, if you're a trader, rather use that time because we are going to be on a lockdown for about what 21 days so try to use that time wisely you know what i mean um rather pump all that energy into your trading learn something you know just so that you can at least um you know when when the band gets lifted and everyone is allowed to go outside and life resumes as we know it we can at least come out of this well equipped to tackle the markets you know what i mean so guys to each and every one of you guys look the only thing that we have right now is a family, a support, I mean, a support structure, which is our families. And you know what, guys? Just try to stay home. You know, keep yourself and your family safe. You know what I mean? Because this is really, really serious. Um, all right, so let's jump into it, guys. Let's jump into it. I just wanted to say that to each and every one of you guys, you know, um, because, yeah, it's bad out there. It's really, really bad out there. But anyway, guys, so let's jump into it. So the only two zones that matter. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I figured I should touch on this. But there's really only two zones that matter. There's really only two zones that happen in the markets themselves, right? Anything else that you think you know is just bullshit, right? <laughs> really, it's just throw it out the window. So the first zone that I'm talking about here is... Um, the first one is a single zone, or rather a single candle zone. Um, and the second one, let's get the second one. The second one, you got it. There's a multi-candle zone. So there's only two zones. Nothing else. There's only two zones. Single candle zone and a multi-candle zone. Multi-candle zone can have anything between 1 to 20 candles within it right and a single candle zone that's it it just only has one single candle and that's that's it really that's it but multi candle zone can have anywhere between two and 20 really it doesn't really write off the zone itself it just basically means a lot of stuff right which i'll touch on um as we go along so let me show you a little bit of uh, some uh, examples I, I, I went ahead and took some um screenshots of um you know the, the different zones just so that I can drive you know the uh, the um, the point home to you guys and you can understand where I'm coming from really all right um let's go into my screenshots here real quick let's start with a multi uh, well single zone a uh, single candle zone rather all right so before we go ahead guys there's one thing also I, wa I wanted to just point out real quick to you guys uh, in my previous lesson remember I had mentioned to you uh, how I use um, volume spread analysis or vol not really volume spread analysis but spread analysis in order for me to be able to find the correct zones right so what I'm what I mean by that is if multi candles are moving in between the body of the last candle that was you know going up or going down it doesn't matter whether you're looking at an uptrend or a downtrend before price actually reversed that's the last kind of point of reference that I'm going to be using as you know the zone itself you know what I mean because, you know, like I said in the previous lesson, um, the most important things to me uh, when it comes to candlestick analysis is the open, the high, the low and the close of each and every session. Um, so I use the last candle as kind of like as kind of like reference, you know, as kind of like reference. Yes, there's a gentleman that follows me by the name of Pastor Charles. Um, he runs the teach me how to fit how to fish FX. Um, YouTube channel go ahead and check it out. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. He actually put it nicely to me He said, you know, he views the last candle as you know The last ditch effort to push prices either down or up So it's like a barricade 
that either the buyers or the sellers need to kind of overcome in order for them to be able to successfully move pricing in an opposite direction. You know what I mean? So what I'm, what I'm actually talking about is if you see this candle here, this blue bullish candle to the upside, right? Um, if you can remember, I used the last candle to the upside or to the downside as reference for my my zone itself, right? So like I said, um, what Pastor Childs actually says is, or what he said, and it, it really made sense because I didn't know just how to put it. This is the barricade here. So this, this candle here, the last candle to the upside, really the bears, when they come in, right, and push prices down, they really need to kind of, take out all of the buyers that are coming this is the last ditch effort you know for the buyers to push prices up and in order for price to move all the way down the bears need to absorb all of the buyers that are coming into the market themselves or that are coming into the market and then some before they can start to move prices down right and volume spread analysis like i said in the previous lesson teaches us that if a candle takes either the high or the low of the previous candle it either tells us that either one of the sides is making progress or, or one of the other side is actually reversing price if you understand what i'm trying to say so in this case you know the bears are reversing price right because they've taken the law of the previous candle and therefore no progress is being made by the bulls to the upside now what i mean by progress is remember in the previous lesson when a candle closes higher than the the or rather when when yeah when the when the the current candle that you're looking at the current session that you're looking at closes higher you know than the previous candle this is progress right but when stuff like this happens it, it literally shows us that you know the bulls have ran out of steam here as you can see with this candle here where the bears came in they pushed prices all the way down they, they absorbed all of those those uh, buys coming into the market and then some and then price started to move down right so they took the low of the last candle um the last bullish candle to the upside and this really signifies the fact that the bulls i mean the bears are back in town and are starting to move prices down right so i just wanted to get that out the way so you can understand the dynamics of actually of, of how price actually moves right so going back to it so single candle zones single candle zones really mean that i've just shown you one this this in actual fact is a single candle zone right as a single candle zone so we can clearly see let's let, let me just grab your attention to to us the left of the screen right up there where i scribbled we can clearly see the last effort of you know the buyers trying to move prices down uh only to be met by resistance from the sellers right and the sellers came in absorbed all of the buyers that came into the market thus forcing prices to go all the way down not only that they took the open of the previous candle right there which literally says to us you know the buyer the buyers or the bulls are no longer able to contain price um and move it up therefore creating progress right so all the progress that this candle made to the upside has completely been wiped out by this particular candle here to the right side which is the bearish engulfing pattern and that's really how the engulfing pattern forms in the first place the engulfing pattern what it does is it absorbs all of the buyers or all of the sales that are coming into the market and then some and that is the reason why the engulfing pattern is such a powerful um candlestick pattern essentially it's a powerful candlestick pattern because you know like i said it takes care of the sales or the buys and then it starts to move prices higher which literally tells any other trader or any trader that look we, we are about to move in the opposite direction you know what i mean so these are single candle um single single candle zones this is how you, you find and determine single candle zones to make it easy for you guys is a single candle zone is typically made by an engulfing pattern right so let me show you what i'm talking about here um so the first one is right here let me just whip my ruler out here so the first one is right here so we can clearly see that this is actually a zone right there right and we've got our breakout candle which is this bearish candle here this red bearish candle here oh that's a nice arrow but this red bearish candle right there that's our breakout candle that formed or that broke out of the zone right of um you know this engulfing pattern um zone so if we extend that to the to the to the right hand side if we extend the zone to the right hand side we can clearly see the price managed to respect not on, not only on one occasion but on two occasions managed to respect this particular zone here and therefore price had a nice and positive reaction to the zone to the downside right so this is an example of an a single candle 
um, zone, right? Moving right along. And then we can clearly see the price actually made that zone, came back into it, had a nice, beautiful test, tried to go out, went back again, and then boom, to the downside, right? It had a very nice, beautiful, sharp response to the downside, right? So we can clearly see that. But not only that, a lot of people also miss this. I don't know why you, you keep doing this. A lot of people, when they see a zone being formed initially like this, right? This big, fat zone here. Uh, so this chart that we're looking at, guys, is based on the on the daily chart, right? So a lot of people, when they see a big zone like this, right? Oh, my goodness. Let me just redraw that. But a lot of people, when they see a zone like this that's been respected, or, or rather, let me just do this. When they see price have an interaction here for the first time, a lot of people tend to forget that these also give off zones just before price actually moves down, right? Never, ever, ever write that off, right? Just don't end or stop at the fact that this zone has been formed by these candles here and if we extend it to the right hand side whatever retest that's going to happen we're not going to count that as zones never ever do that right so you can clearly see here's what i'm talking about so you can clearly see right after this right we had another zone right here form we can clearly see that beautiful zone that actually formed right there this zone here would have also given you a nice beautiful trade here at a lower risk if you were only just waiting for a retest uh, you know and not refining your your trades like i normally do where i go down to a smaller time frame it would have given you a nice lower risk trade as opposed to just waiting for all of this you know just this being your risk had you decided to take this high here or this swing here as a zone your risk would have been way smaller than the initial bigger zone right here. You understand what I'm trying to say? Never ever write them off, guys. You just need to be aware of that. This is a zone within a zone. Zones within a zone are very, very potent, right? More especially if it is an engulfing pattern zone or one candle zone. Very, very potent. You need to be always on the lookout for these, right? Great stuff. So never ever write those off. So that's it for... You know one candle zones now let's move over to um multi candle zones i want to show you this one here a lot of people this is the one that i spoke about in the previous lesson how i use um volume spread analysis to you know volume spread analysis to this is not really a perfect example but i'll just run with it this is how i use volume spread analysis to find you know zones right so a lot of people when they see something to this effect and like i said in the previous lesson normal you know or, or rather conventional supply and demand teachings will dictate that you need to use you know the candle that started the whole move or that started the move to the downside or the origin this is what they normally say the origin of the move is where is where you should really be concentrating on drawing your um, supply or demand zone and in this case a lot of people would have drawn their zone like this right to me this is wrong completely wrong remember what i said about the last candle to the upside where bulls actually in this case bulls tried it's the last ditch effort for the bulls to try to move prices up the barricade that the the, the sellers need to overcome in order for them to be able to move prices down right so that is it that's that's what really happened shout out to pastor charles man <laughs> you really helped me out on that one because i just didn't know how to explain it um but anyway so a lot of people would have drawn their zones based on you know this hammer here and to me this is completely wrong especially when you trade supply and demand what you need to be looking at is the last candle to the upside and as you can see if i extend my my uh, lines um to the right hand side you can clearly see that this zone although it's a huge zone right when price comes back in here, like it did here, retest right there. If you go, if you went over to your smaller time frames, guaranteed you would have found another entry to the downside because you know what? It's a reaction to the downside, right? A positive reaction. By the way, I, I just took a, a small um, screenshot of this uh, chart here, but it eventually shoots all the way down and then it comes back in again just before it goes completely berserk to the downside right um i don't know why i did that but anyway i just wanted to illustrate you know why this is not a single candle zone but a multi-candle zone it's a multi-candle zone because there's two zone i mean there's two candles within the zone this hammer here and then the breakout candle here 
right the breakout candle now remember what i said in the previous lesson this big you know bearish candle is actually let's start with this hammer this hammer here let me explain the psychology behind this zone here so remember last ditch effort to the upside so meaning a lot of buyers are coming into the market right when this hammer forms it's forming because it's absorbing all of the buys that are coming into the market, right? It's absorbing all of the buys that are coming into the market, therefore preventing the buy the buys or the bulls from making any progress or meaning printing um, candles that are going up or bullish candles to the upside, right? So this hammer here absorbed all of the buys that are coming into the market. And once that has been done, right? Two stages, remember that, two stages. Once that was done, this big bearish candle to the downside found it easy for it to actually it's it, it it encountered less resistance than this hammer here if you understand what i'm trying to say so the bulls came in i mean the bears came in here hard and then knocked prices all the way down therefore causing this big bullish candle i mean bearish candle to the downside right so this big bearish candle found no resistance to the downside and that's how price managed to you know print this big candle to the downside is because this candle the hammer had absorbed all of the buys that are coming into the market so that is the psychology of um, a zone that looks like this you always 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 need to understand the psychology of you know um, your zones essentially because once you understand them this is price action really once you understand price action trading becomes easy and really it doesn't matter what um, strategy you use it could be supply and demand it could be um, moving average crossovers it could be anything you know what I mean and uh, you know all you have to do is just understand the dynamics of the markets how the markets work who moves the markets you know all of that understand the dynamics of the market and trading will become easy trust me all right so this is a multi candle zone because there's two candles that formed the zone itself right two candles the absorption candle and the breakout candle so therefore this is a multi candle zone right so it's not a single zone like normal or conventional supply and demand education actually dictates it dictates that you need to draw your zone from the origin of the move down, which is bullshit, if you ask me. Uh, because I've tested this a lot of times. You don't have to believe me. It's completely up to you if you are going to be believing me or not. But I've tested this a lot of times. And I've come to realize that this here is bullshit. All of it. And I know I've been teaching that as well. Well, it's because I was also, <laughs> you know, I succumbed to the bullshitness. <laughs> if that's even a word but anyway so that's what i've come to realize i've come to realize that you know drawing zones from the origin like this origin candle really does not make any sense whatsoever all right so let's move on to a much more complicated um multi-candle zone so here's a different view of a multi-candle zone firstly let's start here how would you have drawn your zone here firstly okay guys so let's start let's start right here let's start right there right so this one it's also a multi candle zone because we can see this bearish candle here failed to break below the low of this bullish candle right um failed to break the low of this uh, bullish candle which basically means it is an absorption candle right and therefore or right after that we had a nice bearish candle to the downside which is ease of movement essentially which is ease of movement by the bears when all the way down broke the low broke the low of that last bullish candle to the upside and price started to go down so that right there ladies and gentlemen is a multi candle zone right multi candle zone but you can clearly see that it was actually broken by this big bullish candle to the upside right now here is where it gets a lot of people also get this wrong as well right this here is a multi candle zone but a big multi candle zone right so how would you draw this multi candle zone here like this here last bullish candle to the upside right and i'll explain something here quickly to you guys about market structure that's the last big bullish candle to the upside all of this is absorption candles even though all of the bear the uh, the the red candles to the downside right the bearish candles to the downside absorption candles they are trying to absorb all of the buys that are coming into the market i guarantee you i forgot which currency pair this is but i guarantee you if you were to look at volume itself right the volume indicator this big 
you know bullish candle here as well as this big bullish candle here and maybe this bearish candle all three of these have unusually high volumes on them which literally says a lot of participants are taking um are taking trades at, at that particular session itself right but when 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 you see that or when i see that it literally tells me that there's a lot of buyers coming into the markets themselves and not only that the candle also tells me that it tells me that there's a lot of buys that are coming into the market um so when all of this happens here all of these bearish candles that happen here they literally tell me right based on this big bullish candle to the upside what's my ruler doing based on this bullish candle they literally tell me that all of these bearish candles are absorption candles understand that they're all absorption candles and the bullish candles to the upside they literally say to me you know the bulls were trying to move prices up again but they were failing to do so so even if you know yeah well they were failing to do so they were failing to move prices high now remember the milestone is taking the high of this candle here this big bullish candle had a bullish candle printed to the upside like that and taken the big bullish candle um you know close this big bullish candle close like that this is progress you know it would have shown progress and therefore i would have changed my mind about all of this that's happening here it would have been absor absorption but the bulls then came back in again and reasserted themselves fast taking out the high of this previous bullish candle you know the close of that previous bullish candle that signifies progress by the bulls and therefore my stance would still be the same the trend is still bullish you know what i mean and i'll be looking for um demand levels essentially for me to be able to jump in because that is progress by the bulls but in this case you can clearly see all of the bullish candles tried to go up but they were met with resistance you can clearly see that they were met with resistance because they couldn't surpass the close of that big bullish candle to the upside they were all met with resistance and until finally the bulls started winning the fight you can clearly see that until the bulls started winning the fight so all of this was absorption all of these red candles to the downside was absorption and this last final leg to break out completely out of this this range here essentially um found it easy to do so because all of the buys had been taken care of right here so that's how you draw this particular zone here itself another thing guys that i also wanted to mention or before we, we do that so that's it guys that's really it there's only two zones that you need to be concentrating on you need to be concentrating on that one candle zone or that single candle zone and the multi candle zones another thing guys is i don't need to mention how important it is for you to identify the trend before you take a trade right bias is always key you need to know where the market is trying to go which way is it finding least resistance you know what i mean if you don't know what i'm talking about go back to uh, some the some videos that i actually uploaded uh which is trading supply and demand in forex why the trend matters as well as how the banks trade they literally touch on you know how the banks not really manipulate but how they how they hold interest at particular highs and particular lows and that's the reason why you know trends actually are born in the first place so go back and watch those two videos and we'll explain what i'm talking about when i say you know um the um when i say that uh, you know you need to be looking at your bias in the first place you need to understand price structure what i mean by price structure is higher highs and higher lows and the breaks of either one of the highs or the lows it depends on you know which um trend you're looking at if it's an uptrend you know the works um so it is vitally important guys and you need to know this it is vitally vitally important for you to understand you know um market structure in order for you to be able to trade anything for that matter <laughs> anything so market structure is it um so guys that's it i hope i've cleared things up for you guys um you know and oh again guys very very important guys just a piece of advice remember your swing highs and your swing lows that is where supply and demand zones are born nowhere else don't trade drop base drop or rally base rally those are stupid most of the time they never hold up and you will guaranteed lose money so rather wait for price to test a zone that you find 
or the, or, or the price is established at a swing, whether it be at a swing high or swing low in the case of a downtrend or uptrend, doesn't really matter. But always wait for price to retest those particular zones at the swings, because trust me, that is where you will make money. If you're going to be trying to find zones anywhere else, there's a high chance that you're not going to be making money, right? Go ahead and test it. Like I said, if you're in South Africa or any anywhere else in the world where you're facing, you know, the lockdown due to the virus, go ahead and test the strategy. Test supply and demand before you can comfortably, um, you know, trade it or even um, risk your, your, your money on. You know what I mean? Other than that, guys, thanks once again for joining me. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Remember to keep the subscriptions coming. Oh, again, supply and demand as well as price action books are still available. So go ahead and get those for yourselves, right? If you haven't got them already, because they are a good read, right? They'll teach you a whole lot of stuff. But anyway, thanks once again for joining me. It's Trader X. It's been lovely, guys. Remember, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Stay indoors. Do not go outside. Right? Don't walk your dogs either. Just stay outside. Have a lovely time. Try to have a lovely time with your family. And uh, work hard at your trading. Alright. It's me. I'm out guys. Cheers.